Hey everybody, um, zooming in from Iceland. It's like 1.20 a.m. right now. Um, I'm in my studio at the Akureyri Art Museum Artist Residency. There's a couple of my paintings in the background that I've been working on. Uh, this fire dancer painting, uh, I made it at my studio in Brooklyn this fall. And I've been living in New York City now for about eight years. And I think the pandemic first kind of dawned on me. Uh, you know, I was discussing uh, Yuval Noah Harari's book, actually. And, you know, he was saying that, like, the three big disruptors that we had to worry about were uh, climate change, uh, technological disruption, and nuclear war. And it came up in discussion. One of my friends said, well, what about pandemics? He's forgetting that. I was like, that's interesting. I, I was flying back from California and I was flying over New York and looking down at the city and just seeing how closely everyone was together and just kind of sank in my stomach. And I yeah, never had that feeling before flying into New York, but I just like, ooh, I need to get out of here soon. Um, and then, you know, of course, in, in January, watching, you know, the images of people being sprayed and hazmat suits coming off planes. I was like, oh boy. Uh, and then, you know, started watching things in February. And, and as soon as that, like, you know, and isolating and making a plan to actually get out of New York. And then uh, when that thing in New Rochelle happened and they were isolating that area, I, I got out of town immediately with my dog and went to my parents' place in North Carolina and started gardening and got chickens. And um, so I was hanging out there for a while. And, uh, you know, I'd already kind of like changed my uh, postage to be forwarded. And I, I don't know, I had a sense that things would be better at a certain date. And it just coincided when I came back perfectly. Uh, I came back in like July and I just, you know, I didn't want to stay from the city. I just, you know, I was attracted to being back there. I wanted to be back in my studio. And um, when I got back, I made some friends with uh, this doctor couple who has a kombucha brewery in my building. And they were throwing these kind of uh, like socially distanced parties on the roof. And, and you know, they, they were first responders themselves. And a lot of their friends were other doctors, like people who worked for the CDC and actually the director of New York's COVID response was coming to these parties. And uh, one party that they had on the night when you would usually burn the effigy at Burning Man, they had a more elaborate setup and they had a fire dancer. And in that week I was looking, trying to figure out subject matter for a show that I was invited into uh, that was, had a New York City theme, but I didn't want to just paint like some old landscape, cityscape. Um, and then I heard there'd be, a, there'd be a fire dancer. And I was like, wow, that would be perfect um, because I could play with the, you know, the different color lights and the distance. And um, it's actually a subject matter that I've been working with for a while. And uh, the title, Cave Venestratum, that comes from one of David Laguerre's paintings. And he, he was the big influence behind the exhibition that I curated at NUMU in 2016 at Narcadia Ego. Um, so next slide. And just to give a little historical context of my interest in working with fire, um, for a long time I've been painting water and you know water is interesting in all the paint the forms are so varied and organic but i noticed the same forms would happen in, in fire also but it was different because instead of you know light falling on the form the form is giving off the light and that was an interesting challenge to paint and so i started by painting hill fire things and had some exhibitions with them and the Long Beach Art Museum ended up acquiring one. And here's a picture with me and Ron Nelson. Um, there was a, a show of new acquisitions in 2014. Uh, next slide. And then, uh, but I also paint figures. And in the background, you see there's a figure in the landscape 
And I, so I wanted to have figures and the element of fire together, but where the figures weren't, uh, you know, a victim of the fire, that they were somehow uh, kind of having some symbiotic relationship with it. And when I saw the media imagery coming from the Ukrainian revolution, I just kind of thought it was interesting how their gestures and how the fire was really working for uh, the protesters to, you know, overthrow uh, the, the guy who claimed that he was going to help them get to the EU, but he was actually connected to Russia, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I won't get into politics. But, I, you know, I wasn't really into the politics. That's the point. I was really just into the figures being close to the fire and, and that as a, uh, a problem to it. To approach with painting. Um, and then I also saw around that same time I was making all, all those paintings, um, I saw a fire dancer at a party in Miami at Al Capone's uh, former villa. And, and I thought, you know, that would be a great subject matter to paint, but I didn't have like a personal uh, connection. I wasn't seeing fire dancers around me until that party. Um, and, and also that, that party, I, the spirit of that party, to, to, to have a party on the roof that's socially distanced, that's following the rules, it, it just, it had a great spirit to it that, you know, things must go on during the pandemic. And it also was kind of looking forward to the future of when we can actually celebrate when this is all over. Um, yeah, thanks for listening. <laughs>